What's going on everyone? Welcome to Rob's house. Today we're going to do another deep dive video. Uh, my Burble Tune video with the Corvette seemed pretty popular. You guys seem to like that. It got a lot of good feedback. I'm glad I could help everyone with that. Uh, today we're going to help out some of my fellow Mustang owners. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys in HP tuners how to put together a ghost cam tune on your Mustang, on your Coyote powered Mustang. This method will work on Gen 1, 2, and 3 Coyote motors, uh, although it might look a little bit different depending upon what, for example, your factory settings are and which motor you have. But the concepts should translate really well. And at the end of the video, we're actually gonna go over the pops and bangs also. So I'll show you how to do a burble tune on the Mustang as well, which is way simpler than doing one on a C7 Corvette. So stay tuned for that. Watch till the end of the video. Before we get started, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell and let me know in the comments. Give me some feedback on what you think on this tutorial. I appreciate you guys watching. Let's dive right in. Now, first and foremost, as I mentioned, the concepts should translate to your car, but the numbers might not look exactly the same. I have a Roush Mustang, okay? Stage three Roush. So it comes with Roush's uh, supercharger on it and Roush's, in my case, I have the phase two supercharger upgrade. So I have the phase two uh, calibration on it. So some of your numbers might look different. That's okay. But like I said, I'll explain it conceptually, but just don't freak out if your numbers don't look exactly like mine. First, we're gonna start over here on the idle tab. We're gonna basically have to do three things to set up a ghost cam tune on a Mustang. We're gonna have to adjust our idle. We're going to have to adjust our variable valve timing, our camshaft angles, intake and exhaust camshaft angles. And we're going to have to adjust, uh, make some minor adjustments to our spark table. First and foremost, we're going to start with our idle. So if we look on screen here, we have, we're in the idle general tab here. Okay, we're going to start here. And for the first thing we need to do is we need to disable the adaptive idle control. We want to use what's called the dash pot feature. So we do not want to use Ford's adaptive idle control, which will give us a smooth idle and it'll search around and kind of make torque adjustments to get that smooth idle. We don't want that. We want the car to chop. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, I, I set our disable RPM error to 100. It was previously set to 50 uh, because we're gonna have more than, we're, we're gonna have about a 50 RPM swing uh, on the ghost cam. With the ghost cam idle being less stable, it's not uncommon to see your idle RPM fluctuate by 25 to 50 RPMs. So. We wanna make sure that we set this high enough that it won't enable, so I set it to 100. I also set the minimum vehicle speed to zero, meaning that the vehicle has to be under this speed in order to enable adaptive idle. So in this case, I set it to zero, so you can never be going negative speed. So in theory, it should never kick on. And I also set max time neutral to 200 seconds. I'm not sure if this is actually required, uh, but it's easy enough to do. And it basically says um, the idle control maximum time for closed loop control in neutral, uh, maximum time to wait for closed loop idle conditions to be met. Uh, in this case, we'll let it wait for a really long time and uh, it should never, because we're at, we have this set to zero miles per hour, it should never actually um, kick our adaptive idle on. One other uh, thing to disable here is uh, I disabled the auto shutoff. I mean, you don't have to do this, but this is your automatic start stop. So if you have like an automatic transmission vehicle, or I'm not sure if the manuals do it actually. What, in the Roush calibration, it, uh, never happen and notice that they have the time set to 1,800 seconds. Um, so the car would have to be running for a long period of time before it uh, shut off. I'm not sure what the factory value is here. It's probably different if you don't have a Roush. But anyway, I just set, I set the auto shut off to disabled so we won't get that traffic light, you know, fuel economy shut off thing that some cars do. I'm pretty sure that's all this is. All right, next tab, we'll move over to RPM. Now a ghost cam tune is going to make our idle less stable. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is actually raise our idle. So if we look, if we look at our compare file, uh, so the, if you're not familiar with HP tuners, all I'm doing is up here where my mouse is, top left corner, you have your main file, your compare file, so I can check 
the old settings basically can have two tunes loaded at the same time and then uh, show differences will show you the value differences between your current file and the old file if we look at my old file my base set point was 625 rpms okay we cannot idle that low anymore with a ghost cam i bumped this up to 875 in park neutral uh and i actually bumped it up to 925 in drive and the reason that i did that i have a manual transmission vehicle so um what happens is when i put my clutch in and i put the car into first gear it it recognizes it as being in drive and it'll actually up my rpm a little bit which actually helps me get off the line if you have a vehicle equipped with an automatic transmission you may not want to do this you may want to keep this the same as your park neutral because if you're in drive it, it'll it'll use this value here i think i don't have an automatic transmission so let me know in the comments if that works but i would leave these two the same if you're if you have an auto trans base set point here this is coolant temperature base so this is like for your cold start sort of where we're setting our target idle and I did the same thing here. If I'm in neutral, I want 875s uh, when my engine's warmed up, right? That's the last two columns. Otherwise, I have it set higher for the cold start. And then if I'm in reverse or if I'm in any one of my gears, I want it at 925 just because it makes it a little bit smoother getting off the line if, you, if you're driving stick. So you have a couple of different temperature-based things here. So you have your cold start, obviously, where your startup is 1,250 RPMs with a base set of a uh, thousand rpms anything under 120 degrees fahrenheit so that's that's your cold start when you first start the car warm uh entry is at 160 degrees fahrenheit uh this is where you start to come down to your base idle um the base notice that i set it to the same as my transmission base set 0.875 uh, but i kept the startup at a thousand so when i actually crank the car and it first fires up it'll overshoot a little bit to a thousand and then come down nicely to an idle uh, and then for a hot startup, this will use the same base value as warm, but for a hot startup, meaning we're at operating temperature, we just turn the car off really briefly and turn it back on. Uh, I just did 925 because that's the same thing that I have set in drive here, just so we, we just overshoot ever so slightly to make sure that we get a nice, uh, a nice startup, and then it'll immediately... Uh, go back down to 875 which is where it'll start to chop uh fail safe conditions here um these were set lower also these were set to 800 from the factory so i just bumped them up to 875 to make sure that they uh, stay uh, where we want them uh and then for our maximum set point here uh if you look our maximum set points uh in drive before prior to messing with it were uh 800 if the engine's cold and 750 if the engine is warm uh, i bumped all of that up by 200 to make sure that they these are above my new base set point otherwise um this maximum when i put the car into gear would have actually set my maximum lower than my base and my rpms would drop and i didn't want that so i just bumped these up by 200 so basically set your bases to 875 and then all the other stuff the startup stuff make sure it's above 875 and the maximum set point make sure it's above 875 fail safe 875 or above you kind of get the idea you want to raise your idle to 875 uh, a lot of people do 850 I had a little bit of drivability issues at 850 a little bit of stability uh issues as well 875 seemed to work better for me and it chops really hard still so no issues there i'll show you at the end of the video we have to mess with one more thing in the idle tab here we'll go to idle torque this was giving me some problems before i messed with this so before we had a rate limit increase of 10 and a uh, rate limit down of 20 i actually flipped those because my my rpms were dropping too low so i wanted to slow down the uh the negative torque requests basically and increase the positive torque requests to make sure that we don't dip too low and stall out because our idle is less stable now the other thing i did was i cut the corrections in half because my car was searching a lot it was the idle was it was it was so unstable that it would overshoot undershoot overshoot undershoot and we would never have that nice 875 like steady idle with the chop um so you just kind of decrease these these were uh 41 and negative 41 yeah that's what it was before i just decreased them to 21 and negative 21 and then also so i don't know why drive is highlighted here i didn't mess with this table at all if you look at the uh, old value and the new value they're both set to 18 i didn't touch that what i did touch was neutral so when i'm in neutral um before the idle torque reserve was only at four what was happening here was if i if i was like coasting or something and i threw the car into neutral this combined with the rate limit down being 20 the rpm would drop too fast and then it wouldn't be able to catch itself uh and we obviously don't want that so uh, i set it to 20. going from 4 to 20 it's a factor of 5 change it kind of depends what 
your car is set to if you have this table if you have a gen 1 you might not have this table i actually don't know what that ecu looks like um but anyway that's the change that i made you might have to play around with this value a little bit to get the idle stable all right moving on we're gonna go to the airflow tab variable camshaft all right let's go over some basics here anyone who clicked on this video probably knows what a ghost cam is you know that that cammed car sound uh, that choppy un sort of unstable idle right and what that is typically you hear this with gm vehicles right you or more specifically vehicles with pushrod engines most notably corvettes so corvettes like my c7 uh they are not an overhead cam they're an overhead valve motor so also known as a pushrod motor meaning that they have one camshaft that sits uh underneath the the valves and the cam lobes push on these push rods, which actuate the intake and exhaust valves, right? There's one camshaft. The newer Corvettes do have variable valve timing, so they, they can var vary the intake and exhaust camshaft angles, although they cannot control the banks independently like the Coyote can with it being dual overhead cam. Dual overhead cam means there's an intake cam and an exhaust cam in each bank of the V8. So there are four cams in uh in a mustang in a corvette when you put an aftermarket camshaft the reason you do that is to increase performance and the way you do that is typically you're you're desiring a longer duration and increased valve overlap between the intake and exhaust valves so what does that mean it means the intake valves and the exhaust valves stay open longer now that's obviously good when you want to make power okay because when you're at the top of your rpm range that allows your engine to bring in more air and it allows it to push more exhaust out the problem with that is when you do that most of these camshafts now eliminate the variable valve timing system so they are fixed cams you cannot vary the intake and exhaust cam angles so you're so you're increasing the performance but what that results in by those valves being open longer all the time is that idle you actually have increased vacuum and that makes your idle less stable and that manifests itself in you guessed it the chop that everyone likes to hear right that big cam muscle v8 sound that we all know and love and that we're going to ruin a perfectly good variable valve timing system on the mustang to achieve this inefficient idling to get that sound i know the irony is not lost on me but i did it to mine too trust me i get it. it's part of the driving experience how does all that translate to the mustang now well first of all because the coyote has a variable valve timing system ford has set the car up so that at idle it is commanding a more conservative intake and exhaust camshaft uh, duration basically so when the intake valve opens it, they will um, increase the angle of that so that the the uh, intake valve opens later and when the exhaust valve closes making the exhaust valve close earlier this decreases our overlap it also decreases the amount of time the intake and exhaust uh, valves are open and in doing so it decreases the amount of vacuum meaning that the engine runs more efficiently at idle and then it can vary that as you progress through the RPM range to increase those durations and increase that overlap as you get to higher RPMs to achieve better performance. So from a perform performance standpoint, this is a great system, right? Just doesn't sound cool, unfortunately, at idle. So it's actually pretty easy to, uh, to command a different uh, intake and exhaust cam angle at idle. The first thing that we're gonna do here is we actually have to look at a table that I have not messed with, two tables actually, under mapped points, intake valve opening and exhaust valve closing, okay? Unfortunately, I can't have these both, I don't think I can have these both open, oh, I can. Perfect. The car from the factory at idle, uh, in, in the case of my car at least, your car might not be the same. Idle's at map point 15. So map point 15 has an intake valve. So if the values here are zero, it means it's using the base values in the intake camshaft and the exhaust camshaft tables on the left-hand side here. See these? If it's zero, it makes no modifications to these. The way we increase duration on the intake cam is we subtract from it meaning that the intake, the intake valve opens earlier. And with the exhaust valve, we would increase the value of the exhaust valve to make the exhaust valve stay open longer so it closes later, right? So in, in both cases, we're making the valve stay open longer, basically. These, these two tables tell you what all of these different map points mean. There are 27 map points from the factory. Notice it goes from zero to 26. It starts at zero, not at one. So there's 27 map points. What you're doing here is you're, you know, you're basically adding whatever values are in here to the stock, to the base intake camshaft uh, opening angle, 
degree and the exhaust camshaft valve closing degree. And what we want to do is we want, so there's two ways to do the ghost cam. In the case of my car, it idles at map point 15 because map points zero through 13 are disabled. This is common on, per, on performance related car because the, on performance related cars, because map points zero through 13 uh, correspond, if I'm not mistaken, to your emissions reduction mode, which uh, when you have a car with a supercharger like mine, like uh, coming from Roush, they just disable that entirely. So my car only uses map points 14 through 26 from the factory. Now your car might not be set up that way. Your car might be set up to idle at map point zero. That's okay. What people do is they say, okay, well, if I idle at map point zero, I'll just go into the intake valve value on map point zero and I'll subtract from it and I'll go into the exhaust valve closing of map point zero and I'll add to it to increase overlap, right? So I see a lot of people doing like minus 40 on the intake and plus 20 on the exhaust to get overlap. Uh, first of all, you don't need that much overlap. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna be using map point 11, which is just a minus 20 on the intake valve and no change on the exhaust valve. Um, that'll give you plenty of chop. Uh, and the downside of doing that is and a lot of people do it to map point zero and map point one map point one is what use it, map point zero and one are what are used at idle and at low rpm so this screws up your drivability because now you have additional overlap while you're trying to get off the line and that's why a lot of ghost cam tunes drive like crap we're not going to do it this way because we don't want our cars to drive like crap and i figured out a different way to do it thanks to discussions on hp tuners forums so with some other members and kind of taking uh, some of the stuff that they learned and incorporating it into my own car. It's not exactly what some of them did, but I, I found that it worked for me. And my car drives great. My car drives totally like stock. It just chops at idle, which is exactly what I wanted. So the reason that you don't want to mess with these map points is that the speed, if you go to airflow speed density, we have all of these map points, right? So we have, I don't even know how all this is calculated. These are like manual uh, speed density calculations versus like GM uses uh, a virtual VE table with coefficients. This is like this uses like quadratic equations. So it's like an entirely different speed density setup uh, that I haven't learned yet. But all, the, all this is to just note that these tables were set up based on the values in our intake and exhaust camshaft angle set points, okay? If we mess with that, not only are we gonna have additional overlap, which is just gonna cause more vacuum at idle, meaning our car's not gonna drive as well. Our fueling is gonna be off too, so it's really not gonna drive right because our speed density equations are gonna be messed up and then our, our um, closed loop fueling system is gonna have to correct. So while it might correct pretty fast, it's not gonna correct instantaneously and you'll notice some hesitation getting off the line, some drivability issues that people complain about, like I said, with ghost cam tunes. We're not gonna mess with anything in speed density. I just wanted to show you that that is there and that's why we don't wanna mess with any of the values in the intake and exhaust camshaft angle tables. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a map point that already has some overlap. In my case, I picked map point 11. Okay, now map point 11 has an intake value of minus 20 and an exhaust value of zero, so no change to the exhaust value. And the way that we're going to tell our system to use that map point at idle is we're going to actually force it into optimal stability mode at idle. And the way that we do that is actually by starting on the right hand side here, the optimal stability enable max load. And what we're gonna do is anything, now if you look at what this was set at before, it had all the the rpm range was fixed and it basically had it hard coded to 0.13 we're going to change that so if you look on the left hand side i set 750 1000 1200 and basically the reason i did that was i wanted to make sure that anything under a thousand rpm i could command 0.3 now how did i come up with 0.3 0.3 is the absolute load on the motor if you're at idle it will in my car it was about 0.25 you can use VCM scanner and log the absolute load to figure out what the absolute load is at idle on your car. It may be different than my car, but you just wanna make sure that this value is higher than that, but not too much higher because you don't wanna affect drivability, right? You want it to be like basically the highest value you would ever see at idle. The highest value I ever see at idle is like 0.28. So I set it to 0.3, just ever so slightly higher. And then at 1200, I transition back to the stock value, which is 0.13. So that's it. So basically just when I'm at idle, I wanna say if I'm if I'm in my idle RPM range under 0.3 desired load, because this is a maximum table, so this is max desired load versus RPM, we wanna enable optimal stability mode. That's what this does. See, if you, if you look at the flavor text on the bottom here, this gives you a description. If I hover over, it says 
if the desired load is below this, optimal stability mode will be used, okay? And now we're gonna set up optimal stability mode to use the map point 11 that I've chosen. So we're gonna do that in a couple ways. First of all, we have to go to our map points configuration and make sure that we enable it. In my case, as I mentioned, the Roush tune does not enable this map point by default. It actually only uses 14 to 25. I thought it was 14 to 26, I was actually wrong. It's 14 to 25. So I just enabled it with a one snap to point, same thing, just turn it on. And then we can go into our optimal stability mode. Now these mapped points, this is a little confusing. Optimal stability mode, the actual table, has values between zero and six in it. So, what, and these values correspond to the intake and exhaust map points that we specify here. So we're taking our intake and exhaust map points and mapping them to optimal stability map points, which seems kind of silly, but the reason it does that is, for example, 15 and 14, if we look over here, 15 has an intake value of 30, exhaust value of zero, 14 has intake value of zero, exhaust value of zero, so no change. If in the optimal stability table, if we put 0.5, it would actually interpolate between map points 15 and 14. So what that would do is it would calculate an intake uh, camshaft angle of 15 and an exhaust angle because they're both zero, it would just be zero, right? So that's why they do this is so that you don't have to choose one map point or another. You can actually, you can actually interpolate between them as well. And if you look at some of the other tables here, um, not emissions reduction, I didn't mess with that at all. Uh, like fuel economy, see how this table has like all these decimal values in here? If we look at the fuel economy mapped points, see it's the same thing, right? So there for fuel economy, when you're in fuel economy mode, it's gonna interpolate between some of these map points to give you the best fuel economy. Uh, we don't need that, but that's just like why this is set up the way it is. Um, I'm just gonna use map point six. This is actually a typo, I don't, I don't need it here in five. Um, you can just change six. And I just set mapped point six to the intake and exhaust camshaft angle map point that I want to use at idle, which is map point 11. Okay, set that to 11. And then in the optimal stability table up here, we actually have to uh, tell the optimal stability mode uh, system to use this in the idle RPM range. So if I look at my source file, um, all this is shifted over because I shifted the X axis here, the RPM axis. So if you look, um, I shifted it so that I can specify 800 to 900 RPM because we're gonna idle at 875, right? Between eight and 900 RPM, uh, if my engine is cold, I actually command map point zero, which is optimal stability mode map point zero, which ends up being intake and exhaust camshaft map point 15. Uh, this is this is the factory, this is, this is where you idle at. They actually uh, advance the intake uh, opening degree so that it opens later. It's, to, it's not open as long to decrease vacuum to give you a stabler idle, so we, we don't wanna use that. Um, so actually, what I'm doing effectively, because from the factory I'm idling at map point 15, that's an intake uh, camshaft angle of 30, and I'm changing that to negative 20. So it's actually a 50 degree difference on the intake uh, camshaft angle from where my car was set up to idle. Uh, so that's quite a bit of overlap. That's a pretty big change. Uh, and then the, exa the exhaust uh, angle is actually the same. Uh, map point 15 and 11 both have it at zero. So it's just, it's just a 50 degree difference on the intake cam. And when I go back to the optimal stability table here, what I did was cold start, I just have it idle normally. I, I didn't make a change there. And then once I get to 150 degrees, so we're starting to get up to operating temperature, 150 degrees and above, I just set it to map point six uh, in optimum stability mode, which we set to map point 11 intake and exhaust camshaft. That makes sense? Uh, and then as we transition, as we go above 900 RPM uh, to 12, you know, up to 1200 RPM, it's gonna transition between six and zero, which as we mentioned before, uh, our map points 11 to 15. So it's gonna go from negative, it's gonna gradually move from a negative 20 intake cam angle to positive 30 intake cam angle offset. And the reason for this is this will give us perfect drivability, right? So as we're as we come off the line uh, and we, we go above 900 RPM, that intake 
uh, cam angle will start coming back to where it was in the factory and your car will just sort of take off nice and smooth won't have any issues there there's one more change we need to make so now we've effectively made the car idle how we want we have an 875 rpm idle and we have overlap because we're using map point 11 here instead of uh, map point 15 from the factory but basically you just want to pick a map point that has a lower intake valve ang angle and a higher exhaust valve angle or in, the, in my case because my intake valve angle was 50 degrees off i picked one that had the exhaust valve uh, that was the same i actually tried it with an with even more overlap but i had some stability issues so that's like the most overlap i could get was a 50 degree total change if i use map point 12 for example i had 20 degrees on the exhaust which gave me a, a 70 degree split you know 50 degree intake 20 degree exhaust and it, it just wasn't idling right so uh, you can play around with the map point and the best part is once you have the optimal stability table set up here you can change which map point you used by just editing line six here to whatever map point you want and just make sure that in map points configuration you have it toggled on and at snap point snap to point you have it toggled on and then it'll work final thing we got to do you notice this other two tables here that are highlighted uh that i have not discussed is combustion stability now from the factory this is this was just set to all negative 60 so it basically wasn't used um, and what I did was I modified it so that um, this is engine runtime in seconds on the uh, y-axis and the x-axis is engine coolant temperature so basically from my cold start as the engine runs longer and warms up I want to allow this is a maximum table so this is the maximum allowed uh, intake cam angle retard so first it's set to zero so it's not allowing anything even though even though i'm commanding potentially uh minus 20 it's not going to actually allow me to do it until the motor gets up to temperature and the reason for this is we want we want to make sure that cold start is stable okay and also when we first crank the car notice at runtime zero i have it zeroed across the board so when i'm cranking the car it won't allow that intake cam to move at all and then as soon as the car starts one second it can go to negative five then two seconds negative 10 three seconds negative 15 four seconds negative 20 and then beyond that it allows it to to go uh, more and if you have an na car some of these uh, map points the intake angle might be uh, even lower in my case my car supercharged that they, they they've messed with the cam angles so by the time i've been running for four seconds if my car was already at operating temperature it'll start to chop it won't chop immediately but it'll start to chop after a couple seconds this just makes this just helps with your cold start and i did the same thing to the exhaust cam uh, it's in the opposite direction because adding to the remember subtracting from the intake cam gives you more duration and more overlap for the intake cam because it's when the valve opens but the exhaust it's when it closes so you're adding on the end to make it stay open longer basically um and this max table um this was actually mod this is how it looked from the factory where it actually didn't allow the exhaust the exhaust cam to move for the first 20 seconds of the car being on so i just changed that to sort of mirror what i did on the intake cam where basically if we're cold and the car hasn't been running for a while um we wait for it to warm up and wait for it to run for a little while before we reach our final maximum value of 50. And uh, it, in this case, I, my car will actually hit that in some of the map points. These are max values. So like I said, these are, these are just, this will just prevent you from going this far when you first start the car. Uh, these are not, this, this will not actually set the angle. It's just what it allows your mapped point to do based on the coolant temperature and how long the car has been running. So this is a cold start feature. This also, this is another stability feature just to make sure that your car cranks correctly and you know starts to idle correctly. And then it can get into the chop that's a little bit less efficient, but that way you won't have any problems starting the car. Uh, and that's that's all we got to do with the camshaft angles. Uh, the only other change we got to make is to spark. Oh, you can ignore, you can ignore this, map point 12 and 13. That's irrelevant. Map point 11, because this is the one I'm using at idle. I had uh, experimented with 12 and 13, but you can disregard that. Um, map point 11 this is the one that I'm using at idle all we got to do is pull some timing here so from the factory we have you know you see between 34 to 43 degrees of timing ish and I pulled out this is the differences table so just in idle in you know between 750 and 1000 rpms so we're idling at 875 um, I just pulled timing 
under 0.3 load because remember optimal stability mode only engages if we're under 0.3 load so i didn't want to mess with in case this map point gets hit uh any other time i didn't mess with anything above because that is when you're actually driving and we don't want to mess with our drivability i just stuck to 0.3 and below uh and just subtracted you know from about 14 degrees to about 22 degrees by setting everything to 20 so almost cutting it in half basically the amount of of uh of ignition timing that there is at idle and that's it that's all i gotta do i know i say that's it and we're you know probably about 25 to 30 minutes into the video but that's it you have a ghost cam now and it should cold start properly it should drive pretty much like factory uh, and the other thing too is when you coast down because we didn't mess with if we go over to idle general we did not mess with in gear to park neutral delay do not mess with this value leave it at two seconds if you make this lower because you want it to chop faster when you throw it into neutral you'll have some stability problems basically if you're at higher rpms and you just throw your car into neutral it'll it, it'll just immediately drop to idle mode because you have no load on the engine now that you're in neutral it'll immediately go into idle mode it'll increase all that overlap and you'll actually get like a slight bit of cam surge where the rpm will drop a little bit too low and it'll have to catch itself the car will kind of shudder and act all funky so don't mess with this value leave it at two seconds if you have any problems coasting down and and going back into neutral if you're driving a stick shift car uh, you can actually increase this value too and it'll just it'll just hang the rpm a little bit longer um at you know around a thousand rpms or whatever before it starts to to chop again uh, that that gives you that smooth transition so don't mess with that value uh that's pretty much all there is to it for the ghost cam uh if you want to see how we do our burble tune our pops and bangs we're going to go over first we're going to go over to torque management general and notice all we got to do is mess with our torque ratio clips and the it's it's the lower long it's the lower torque ratio clip so long and short and all i did here is again uh, under low load so when we're on uh, d cell when we come off the gas um, we will be under 0.3 load or in my car i was you might have to data log this and make sure that that also holds true for your car like i said i have a supercharged car so i don't know how that impacts the absolute load but basically all i did was uh from 1250 and up so everything above idle basically while i'm driving all i did was i subtracted a bunch from these values so in this case I subtracted 0.3 so the 0.3 the 0.3 engine load uh row I basically cut in half and the uh, 0.2 and 0.1 I cut basically by 20 uh, by a uh, 75 percent so they're 25 percent of their original value so if you look at my values here and then I did the same thing in both the long and the short tables same concept basically just take these values and reduce them don't do anything above 0.3 because again that's you know, like you're actually you could be on the gas at that point it'll affect drivability you want to make sure you only uh, only mess with the rows uh when you're off the gas best thing to do is just grab a data log before you mess with this and see what your absolute load is every time you you get off the throttle and see what the maximum value you see in my case the maximum value i'll see is 0.3 so i mess with 0.3 and, and lower and basically what this will do is these torque ratio clips are when your torque management system kicks in so when you come off the gas it it slowly pulls spark out before you hit fuel cut and it does that to make a smooth transition well by lowering these ratio values because they're multipliers we actually make that make it pull the spark out faster which will actually result in more engine braking so you'll feel your car actually engine brake more without you hitting like just when you come off the gas um, and the reason it does that is because it's pulling a lot of spark out and that's when you'll get your pops and bangs um, One thing to check here in, all, in order to allow for the pops and bangs You have to allow a lot of spark to be pulled if you go into the spark advance Tab just make sure that your minimum sparks are set low in my case. They were already set to negative 20. That's plenty low um, But they should they should be around negative 20 for your minimums in order to allow that much spark to get pulled out To get those pops and bangs disclaimer this is not good for your catalytic converters. Okay, this will shorten the life of your catalytic converters. In pulling spark, we're allowing unburnt fuel to make it into the exhaust, which the hot exhaust ignites, causing that pop and that bang. Uh, and, and depending upon how much time you get it to pull uh, flames to come out uh, of the exhaust. Now, if you have cats, you probably won't see flames because the catalytic converter will, will kind of catch a lot of that. 
but as a result it's it's going to mess up the catalytic converter over time so just realize that this will shorten the life of your emission system and catalytic converters are expensive so you will have to replace them more often this is just something to be aware of if you don't have catalytic converters not that i'm recommending that but if you don't have catalytic converters uh, there should not be a downside to doing this. It's, it's also worth noting that with uh, the ghost cam tune, because we're, we're commanding a higher idle and increased valve overlap, so less efficiency, um, we will actually uh, be wasting a little bit of fuel. So not that it really matters, but your, your fuel economy and like bumper to bumper traffic say uh, will be a little bit worse. In my case, it's barely noticeable. If I'm really stuck in bumper to bumper traffic, we're talking like maybe one mile to the gallon at most but it really hasn't changed my fuel economy all that much again just disclaimers just just so you you know what to expect with these types of modifications uh the other thing you can do with the burble tune if you want to make it more intense is if you go to fuel dfco tab uh dfco stands for deceleration fuel cutoff if you want the pops to go on forever if you never want to hit fuel cut you can change this enable a ect to something like way too high um the range on the bottom down here when i mouse over says up to 240. so you could like make this whole table 240 and set the enable rpm to like 8000 and the disable rpm to 7900 so anything under 7900 it'll disable uh, dfco and you'll never have fuel cut now the obvious downside of doing that is you will be fueling on deceleration all the time which means again increased heat in your exhaust system shortening the life of your catalytic converters and of course wasting gas so you will have a little bit worse fuel economy if you do that uh, but the pops will never stop so <laughs> it'll just keep popping all the whole time you're off the gas and it, it will be pretty loud and pretty crazy uh, it's also worth noting if you have a Gen 3 Coyote vehicle, so a 2018 Mustang or newer, my, mine's a 2015, so it's Gen 2 Coyote 2015 to 2017. If you have a Gen 3 Coyote, there is a Burble Tune setting in this menu. I believe it's in the Diffco menu, if I'm not mistaken. Hit me in the comments and let me know if, if this is the correct location for it. But I know it's there. And basically, you have you have one for normal driving mode and one for sport and track driving mode where you can enable the burble settings and you can choose the burble intensity and the burble duration. So you actually don't have to disable Diffco and you can still make it pop and bang for a long time. So you can set it up where like in normal driving mode, it's like a moderate burble and it doesn't last all that long. But in sport mode, it's like full cannon fire for like five seconds uh th that's pretty cool because it overrides your stock uh diffco settings with respect to the duration of the burble and it overrides your um lower torque ratio clips uh in the torque management section so that's like a cool way where if you have a newer vehicle you can sort of toggle it on and off so if you're in sport driving mode it's just like crazy and then if you don't want it all the time you can have it where your normal mode is uh, it's either not there or it's more relaxed or whatever you can kind of customize it a little more if you have a gen 1 or gen 2 coyote unfortunately you can't customize it uh, because that setting is not there kind of awesome that ford put that in their ecu literally so that people who modify these things in the aftermarket uh could increase the burble sounds you know the pops and bangs and stuff like that ford listening to their customer feedback and and kind of incorporating that stuff so anyway um that wraps it up for today's video before we sign off and we go listen to the car just want to thank everyone if you've made it this far in the video i know these deep dives are super long but i want to give you all the information um as best i can uh, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions by all means if anything wasn't clear i'm happy to clarify hit me up in the comments uh give me some feedback was this helpful was it not helpful did i confuse the heck out of everyone was i clear let me know and of course like and subscribe if you like this video hit that notification bell as usual i hope this video is helpful i hope this video is entertaining and i'll see you guys next time all right guys we are here in the mustang and i just wanted to give you a uh real quick um, this is actually gonna be a warm start, but just to show you the startup that the car starts smooth and comes down nicely to that idle chop that we want. Uh, note that this is a warm start, so you're not gonna get that extended period of time cold start. It's just gonna start right up. It's gonna do a warm start and then immediately come down to idle. But since we did those time-based maps, it will not chop immediately. It'll start up first and then it'll come down to the chop. So check it out. It happened pretty fast in this case because the car was already warm.
there you go.